Oh 
These things have run rampant and are prevalent in our churches, even our doctrinally sound churches. There's these notions that people are accepting. Let me tell you two of them, we'll sing be done, all right? Before we get to this part, just in case I forget, thank you for letting us come. It's an honor. Is it okay if maybe one of these days we come back, Annie? Is that all right? It's going, to be, it's going to be less awkward if you invite us. Otherwise, we'll just show up and it'll be weird, all right? Did you know that you're supposed to know for sure you're saved? Did you know that? What if I told you I know that I'm saved? Would you believe me? I know beyond the shadow of a doubt there's not a sermon preachable that could make me doubt what happened to me. June the 7th, 2000, when I said goodbye to religion and I said yes to Redeemer. Would you believe me if I said I know that I know that I know? So many people say, Ricky, I think I know. I hope I'm 99% sure, but a person can't positively know. That's, that's why we have to hope. Friend, I hope I see him today, but I have a blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. I know I met him because I was there when it happened. I know him. But just in case you don't want to take the opinion of a dumb okey, and I wouldn't if I were you, the Bible says, Pat, aren't you glad we can say that? See, that trumps what Grandma thinks. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, it says, These things have I written so that you may know that you have eternal life. A God who cannot, will not lie says you can know today. Friend, don't you think you ought to if He says you can? Second thing, you don't get saved when you want. Some of you need to hear this. How very American of us for us to think that it's on our terms, on our timeline. Whenever we want, when I am good and ready, I'll get saved. That's not what the Bible says. That's what we hear. That's what we think. That's how we act. But the Bible says in John chapter 6, verse 44, the only way anyone will ever be saved is if the Father draws him. That means that this is a party you must be invited to attend. And His Spirit will not always strive with man. You do not have an endless supply of chances. It's not on your terms. See, right now we know Thought the Holy Spirit is walking eyes. And in that still small voice, convicting hearts. And He's saying things like, Hey, you know about me, but you don't know me. You put money in my plate, but you don't know me. You sing songs, you come to church. You teach Sunday school, you lead the music. You can win some Bible trivia games, but you don't know me. Some of the reasons that we've heard people cling to. Well, I know I'm saved because my daddy was a preacher. Well, I know I'm saved. I've been baptized five times just to make sure. I know I'm saved. Listen, I know more about the Bible than most people. Ladies and gentlemen, growing up, I was a Boston Celtics fan. Still to this day, Celtics fan. Which means growing up, Larry Bird was my favorite player. Raise your hand if you know who that is. Larry Bird is the Hall of Fame power forward for the Boston Celtics. Growing up, I had his shoes, his, his, uh, his jersey, his signed uh, basketball, his posters, his car. To this day, I can quote to you Larry Bird's statistics. I know all about Larry Bird. But I don't know Larry Bird. Some of you have his jersey and his bumper sticker. You're a member of his club at church. And you can quote his statistics. But you don't know Him. At the same time, the enemy's here and He wants 
you. He's motivated. He is here to seek and destroy you. He is trying to distract you from my voice right now. And He is trying to convince you that you have time. Listen, put it off. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe tonight. They've already saved too long. The Methodists are going to beat you to KFC. Maybe this isn't even your home church, man. Next week. I tell you what, young person, here in a few years, here in about five or six, maybe ten years, when you've had your fun, after a lot of living and a lot of sinning, then you get serious, then you get saved. But not today. Look at me. If you only hear one thing, hear this. Time is not on your side today. Time is your enemy. And if the Bible is true in John 6, 44, when it says that you're saved, only when He draws you, my question to you, as you're playing Russian roulette with your eternity, is what if He's not drawing you tonight? What if He's not drawing you next week? Next month? Young person, what if He's not drawing you in 10 years? I wish it weren't true. I wish it weren't in the Bible. But the fact of the matter is, when people die, even good time things, church attending, hand raising, amen shouting people, when they die without Christ, full of religion, they go to hell. You better hear this. I just want to share a story with you. I need to pick on somebody. Man, I don't know why I picked you. Stand up for a moment. What's your name? Billy Smith. How tall are you, Billy? That's too tall, Billy. Sit down, please. Thank you. I thought you were shorter when you, you were slouching. That's why I picked you. <laughs> Billy, let's say that you and I are close friends. And you come to me and you say, Ricky, pray for me. I went to the doctor and the doctor told me that I have a very rare blood disease and there's no cure for it. I have to have a blood transfusion. But there's a special kind of blood that I need and they don't know where to find it. Without it, I'll die. So Billy, because we're so good friends, we go and we look the world over trying to find this blood, but we can't find it either. So we give up. But my little girl, oh, I have two other children. My angel, Laylee Cherie Caps. No matter what her mother says, she is daddy's girl. visit, just a checkup, I find out that my princess has the exact blood that Billy needs. And I tell the doctors, don't call and tell him. I want to deliver the news in person. I want to see the look on Billy's face when he realizes that he's been saved. The doctor says, Mr. Caps, I don't think you understand the gravity of the situation, sir. You see, it wouldn't take some of her blood. No, no. We'd have to have it all. Your child would have to die in order for Billy to live. I didn't look down at my little girl. I said, baby, do you want to do that? She says, daddy, I don't. I don't want to. Daddy, if there's any other way, I'd prefer that. But Daddy, if you want me to, on the account of how much we love Billy, and because it's his only hope, Daddy, I'll do it for you. I'm so proud of her. I hug her for what seems like years and I kiss her a million times. I tell her I love her. And then I'd have to turn my head, wouldn't you? I could not watch as the doctors put the needles in her arm. And they drain her little body dry and my child dies. I couldn't watch. After they harvest the blood, I'd have to spend a moment there. It's precious to me. Listen, you may think it's sweet, but this blood is precious to Daddy. This is my child's blood, not yours. Can you imagine the audacity, 
the gall should I then take this news to Billy and say, Billy, dear, this was what my child did for you. Should Billy say, Ricky, thank you, I appreciate it. But I'm a little busy today. And there's a lot of people watching today. And I don't know if I'm ready today. So I'll tell you what. The doctor said I might have 10 years. Why don't I? Why don't you just call me every so often? See if I'm ready. Or better yet, why don't I just call on you when I feel like it's time? And you say, Ricky, who in the right mind would do that? Pastor, we ask ourselves that question every single week. Who in their right mind would do something like that? Are we seeing this how God is seeing this now? You can come in your fancy clothes and you can come with your tithe in hand and your certificate of baptism and your church membership card. You can come and inside there's no peace. Inside you're scared of death. Inside is eternity was going to be asked of you in 30 seconds. You hope. You think maybe. But you don't know for sure. So the whole reason we came is to ask you this question. Are you saved? If you're not, no matter how long you've been a church member or a staff member, no matter what list of good things you're clinging to and have done, friend, you can leave knowing that you're saved. I want the guys to sing this. I want the guys to sing a very exciting song if you're saved. And if you're saved, I hope it reminds you and I hope it reignites the joy of your salvation because some of you have just flat out lost it. But if you're here lost and undone, please pardon me, but I hope this scares you to your knees. This song says, this same Jesus from Bethlehem. This same Christ who hung on the cross for our sin 2,000 years ago. This same Redeemer who could be calling your name out to be saved for the very last time. This same Jesus. Hey! He's coming back. Listen. The day that they were dreading yeah. had come to pass the one that they had followed so long was leaving them at last their hearts filled with sorrow they watched him sin then the angel said the one you see is coming back
close your eyes just for a moment? This might not be how you do it. It's okay. It's going to be different this morning. It's okay. I promise you, when I ask you this question, I'm not going to call on you, wouldn't walk back to you, not going to ask you about it later, not even going to tell the pastor who it was. I just want to pray for you. That's it. If you're here today and you either know that you're lost or you just don't know for sure you're saved, with no one looking around, would you lift your head and look at me? I'm not going to pretend this is easy. I've been there. Listen, I got saved at a revival. I was the evangelist. So I understand the pride swallowing that possibly has to take place. But I would put the life of all of my children on the line and tell you that you would never regret it. You'd never regret the day you made sure. I'm obligated to remind you that you're not promised another chance. See, you don't know when your number is called, but the Bible says that your days are already numbered. He already knows. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your chance. Everyone look up for a moment. Church, I count eight. Now maybe there's more and I didn't see it. Maybe you just didn't want to raise your head because you're nervous. That's okay. Eight says, I don't know, pray for me. So I hope that we see at least eight get saved today. Say, Ricky, is it possible to doubt and but you're saved? Yes, it is. But look at me. If you came doubting, but you leave knowing, friend, I say you got saved. You will never question whether or not you met the one. Ever. Here's how you get saved. There's not a prayer that can save you, by the way. It is not a magic spell. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We read that and we think we know what it means, but we miss the key word, Lord. Lord does not mean Savior. This is not about getting out of hell into heaven. It's much more than that. That's just a, a perk. Lord does not mean healer or friend or comforter. It means master. It means the boss of your life. We don't have time to be polite, so let me just tell you that if you have no inclination, no desire, you know already you are not going to let Him be the boss of your life, look at me, you can't be saved. We could say it a nicer way, but we don't have time for that. But if you want to transfer ownership, Lord, I might not be much, but everything I am is yours. And He's here to save you. So let's do this one more time. If everyone can just bow your head. You don't have to say this out loud. God doesn't have a hearing problem, but you can. Remember, you must meet it in your heart. There is no magic spell. If you want to know that you're saved, pray this with me. Heavenly Father, I believe you sent Jesus to die and He rose on the third day. And God, I put my trust in Him alone. God, would you forgive me? Lord, I've messed up so many times. You say that you forgive if I confess. Lord, I repent of who I was. And if you'll have me, my life is completely yours. I'm asking you to save me. Help me to live for you. Be my Lord, my Master, my Savior forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, if you said that prayer, 
I don't believe you'd be ashamed if you meant it. He said, if you're ashamed of me in front of men, I'll be ashamed of you in front of my Father. I believe that you would want to shout from the mountaintops, even if you're shy and nervous. It's okay. Hey, this is the best. This trumps graduation, wedding days, and kids being born. Listen, this is the best day of your life. This is what Jesus came to die for, was today for you. And this is not a secret society. That's supposed to be kept secret. If you got saved, if you said that today and meant it, if you got saved today, this is your chance to make it public. If you got saved, would you raise your hand? It's okay. I know you're, I know you're nervous. You might be shy. Don't you be ashamed. Don't you be ashamed. Anyone? This is what's going to be our prayer. Pastor, then we're going to have an invitation. I'm going to turn it over to you to look at me. I'm scared for at least eight of you. Heavenly Father, God, in a way only that you can, Lord, I pray that you give them courage and boldness. Let them know that this is a chance that you have given specifically to them by divine appointment. God, the Christians that are living below the privilege, bring them to their knees too. And we'll give you the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. And then, Pastor, would you come? If you have questions or if you want to come talk to them about your salvation, or maybe you just need to come pray for someone that's lost. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what an altar is for. As we sing, you come. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Would you like to be made new? Right here.